holy grail, game changer, magic bullet. These are the various phrases used to describe retinoids or retinols, however you want to call them. The real name is retinoids, by the way. Uh, but they scare so many of you still, it seems, as it is the commonest thing I get questions about when it comes to solving problems in skincare. And I couldn't quite believe it that one of my team, Olia, told me this week that she was reluctant to start a retinol, and that's despite spending all the time in the office and, you know, hearing your questions, answering them. So I thought, you know what? There must still be a big group of you who's still nervous about this, so maybe I should do a demo. Now, let's just recap. Retinoids, the umbrella term for the vitamin A molecules that have such a profound effect on the skin. They help with acne, they help with premature aging and sun damage, and they help with pigmentation. Now, retinoids encompass many different active ingredients. So let's start off with uh, retinol palmitate. The gentlest, and in my view, pretty much ineffective, is the weakest. Then we go to retinol, which is probably the most well-known, that's available over the counter, it's cosmetic. Then we go to retinal or retinaldehyde, which is found in the Medicaid products, it's also found in some of the Aven products. Then we have granactive retinoid, which is a newer version of a retinoid, over-the-counter, cosmetic grade, but has intrinsic activity, so it's one of the most interesting, and it's why we put it into Flawless Nightly Serum. Then we come to the prescription grade retinoids. We have adapalene, also known as differin, retinoic acid or tretinoin, and tazaratine. So wherever you're starting out, and you know, if you have sensitive skin or are nervous, it makes sense to start up here and not down here. There are a number of little tricks and tips I can share with you that will make the process much easier, much less scary. So let's get into it. So first things first, retinoids are always used at night and that's because most retinoids are broken down by exposure to ultraviolet. So it's always the nighttime. Now, I always start having cleansed my face. My skin is now touch dry, so not wet, which in theory is meant to increase the penetration of products. I always start with some moisturizer. Now, it depends on where you are in your retinoid journey. If like Olia, you're at the beginning, you might wanna start with a full layer all over what we call buffering. So that's where you use a moisturizer to basically seal your barrier and dilute the effect of the retinoid that's going on your skin. Now, I am somewhat veteran retinoid user, so I am not going to do that tonight because I'll be using Flawless Nightly Serum, which is fairly gentle, albeit packs a punch. So I'm gonna use moisturizer in a more strategic way. Now, really the common no-go zones, especially at the beginning, are around the eyes. So inside that orbital bone, you can feel it, the socket bone, where the skin becomes thinner. Then the skin right next to the lips. Um, so basically around the orifices and similarly can be around the edges of the nose as well, but more commonly the crease at the side of the nose because any creases tend to allow product to collect. And if you have your retinoid collecting in creases, boy, you're gonna feel it. The same goes for if you have little creases around the mouth or even the nasal labia line. Again, be really conscious of product collecting in those areas. So, because in this instance, I'm not using Flawless Nightly Serum around my eyes, I don't like azelaic acid in the eye area, I'm gonna do my moisturizer goggles, which basically just means I'm gonna put a layer of moisturizer on the eye skin. So A, it's moisturized and treated because of the niacinamide that's in Flawless Moisturizer. But importantly, it provides a defense layer, if you will, that stops you, you know, either accidentally moving the retinoid across or even when you apply it here, maybe it creeps up a little, you're going to bed after all. So that's my moisturizer goggles in place. And, you know, if you're naturally quite dry around the eyes, be quite generous with that, maybe even go thicker so you have a visible layer that you can see. Uh, I then, 
you know, will be cautious, I'll do a layer around my mouth because this is the commonest area practically for us to have issues when it comes to retinoid dryness, the muzzle zone, if you will, or even, you know, the mask area. So we're all naturally a little bit drier around the mouth probably from wearing masks more. And the nature of the thinner skin by the lips combined with the fact that we eat, we talk, there's stretch and strain going across that area. It means that over the course of the day, if your skin is drying out a little from retinoid use at the beginning, that is where it starts to show. Anybody who's used a retinoid long enough will at some point experience dryness on the chin. So what I encourage you to do is to get to know where your dry patches are once you get started. Get used to feeling your skin when you're cleansing and understand, oh, it's a little bit rough and dry there. That's an area where you need to shield it um, before you put your retinoid on. So I'm gonna put a little bit on my chin just because that's an area where I tend to have issues. But of course, these are also areas down here, especially where we want to treat with our retinoid because that's an area that's prone to breaking out. So. It's about finding that careful balance. But with this sort of preemptive approach using moisturizer, you will reduce the risk of problems. You might not prevent them completely, but in reality, if you use retinoid for long enough, you will at some point experience retinoid dryness. And I promise you, it's not as bad as everyone says, um, especially if you follow these little tools and tricks um, to help prevent disaster. Now, if you're prone to getting dry around the sides of the nose, and lots of us are, you can even put a little bit of moisturizer there just in that crease to prevent the retinoid from collecting. Okay, so I'm just focusing on the face now. I'm gonna move on to my retinoid. So I'm using nightly serum, so Grand Active Retinoid, and I'm gonna use a full pump, which is that kind of dose. Now, in terms of distributing it, retinoids are generally used to treat the whole face. I'm not going to talk about treating the neck with retinoids today, but for the whole face, which is what you should be focusing on at the beginning, I wouldn't advise anybody to use retinoids at their neck when they're just starting out. That's what I call advanced retinoid use, and that comes later. So I am going to use my 13 dot technique because I've found through the years that this is the best way to encourage a small, even amount applied all over without huge excess in any one spot, which is really what we want. So you don't wanna to get too caught up with, oh, I have all the spots down here, that's where I need to put most of the product. No, 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 That resist that temptation, okay? That's why I developed this technique. So three dots per cheek on the forehead and then two on the nose and two on the chin. And then I use a firm gliding movement, sweeping it over the skin, but carefully, you know, we're not sort of doing a, a washing machine action here. We want to be careful and precise. And oftentimes even using just those sort of third and fourth fingers, a good way to be careful and precise about where you're rubbing it. You do want to treat the nose because that's course where we have our pores that we want to keep on clogged but with using those two fingers you can actually be more precise so again a lot of us have fine lines around the mouth breakouts and things so you do want to come near the mouth but you've got that layer of moisturizer on to protect those delicate areas so it's not going to have as drying an effect as it otherwise would have so that's almost all absorbed now there we go. Fantastic. Now, in terms of dose, I used a full, a full pump of nightly serum. If you're not using a product that's a pump, generally the guidance is to use a pea, or what I would consider half a fingertip length. The fingertip is a line from the crease to the end of your finger, and that's half a fingertip or a pea. Now, you might look at that and go, there's no way that's doing a whole face. Stop. 
take it from me and all the other thousands of retinoid users who are out there, that is sufficient, especially at the beginning. If you run out a little bit early, don't worry. Just do your best to get it to work um, over the 13 dots. But I promise you that is sufficient at the beginning until you get your stride with it. It's really tempting, as I said, to go in fast and hard, but remember that it's not really the next morning when this will cause problems. Most of the time, you know, you might start off with a bigger amount, you might put it on, be fine the next day and you keep going. Retinoids catch up with you at days three to five. And that's, that's the problem. So be patient, listen, do a pee. And in terms of frequency, I usually recommend every other day at the beginning, no matter what strength of retinoid you're starting out with, if you're very sensitive and you're nervous, every third day is fine. And then check in with yourself at two weeks. Is it going okay? Is the sort of, you know, any dryness, is it manageable? Is it mitigated by moisturizing through it? And if it is, then that's when you step up the frequency. So step up the frequency first, then you can try using it every other day. If you were doing every third day, you can try every other day. So. Slowly, slowly, you're building up to using it daily because vitamins work best when taken daily. Once you're comfortable with a daily uh, regimen, then you can think about increasing the quantity so then you might go to the full fingertip length. So that's why in our routine finder, and I urge you to complete that if you're using nightly serum, it's on the website, um, we tell you to think about using products in six week cycles. So if it takes you six weeks to get up to using it every day, that's fine. Then another six weeks to build up to using the full amount, the fingertip amount every day, that's fine too. Now, one thing you might want to do, again, if you're being super cautious or if you have dry skin, is to put a layer of moisturizer on top of your retinoids. So that's fully absorbed now. And that's what you should do. You should make sure it's gone in completely. So. This is what I call the moisturizer duvet, or if you're doing a buffering layer, it's called a retinoid sandwich because of the extra layers of moisturizer. Now, you've moisturized your eye area, and if you've been careful with your application, you won't have swept any of the retinoid into the eye area, and you want to be very careful of doing that. It's one of the commonest rookie errors is that you accidentally touch your eyelids when you've got retinoid on your, your fingers. Now, it's not to say that you can't use retinoids around your eyes, but especially at the beginning, you don't wanna do that. That's definitely a fast route to a red dry eyelid. So what I tend to do with the, the second layer of moisturizer over the top is to sweep outwards in a sort of, you know, away from the center of the face kind of gesture, which avoids you moving any product underneath onto the lip area or onto the eye area. So moisturizer duvet, if you're just moisturizing over the top, or I call it a retinoid sandwich technique, if you have a layer of moisturizer underneath. Okay, good. Now, in this instance, I'm gonna moisturize my neck separately, but do take care because again, I've seen it happen loads of times where someone has been quite free with applying their retinoid in their face, gone straight to bed, and then probably slept, you know, with some sort of scooch up position that has ended up transferring retinoid from face to neck and then they wake up with a red sore neck. So again, it can be a good idea to put moisturizer on even before you do your retinoid in your face. Just again, like we did with the eyes, just to kind of protect it, the moisturizer polar neck, if you will. Okay, so that's me ready for bed. I think. I've really covered all the key steps, the important parts. So planning, protecting these key areas, the nose, the eyes, the lips, and the neck, any fine lines where product would tend to collect. The importance of the distribution of the product so that you get what we call feel change. You want that all over transformative effect from using the retinoid to benefit all your skin, not just trouble zones where you've got pigmentation or acne. And we want to be patient. <laughs> I cannot emphasize this enough. I'm gonna say it again. Go slow. It's, it's the safest and easiest route to happy retinoid use. So I hope these demo videos are helpful. The last week um, we did azelaic acid and that seemed to be what really well received. So I can keep going with these sort of demo videos. You don't mind looking at my face 
without cosmetics. Um, leave me a comment down below if there's another kind of group of ingredients that you'd like this kind of deep dive into how to use them. Um, if you know someone who'd benefit from this video, please do share and get the word out because I really do want as many people as possible to benefit from this amazing ingredient. Um, and I think it can be scary at times as it was for Olia, but it really is work that's worthwhile.